Alhamdulillah, salatu salam ala Rasulillah. Inshallah, we're going to be continuing with the tafsir of Surah An-Nas, which is the second of the Mu'awadatayn that we have started discussing when we started talking about Surah Al-Falaq. And just like in Surah Al-Falaq, we find in this Surah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is instructing the Prophet والسلام, and indirectly, by extension, also instructing humans, the Muslims, to seek Allah's refuge from different types of evil. And those types of evil can be in the form of black magic, in the form of shayateen, and hasad, jealousy, and so on and so forth. So we have been taught, uh, according to a hadith that the Prophet ﷺ used to make it a habit, especially at night before going to sleep, to recite Surah Al-Ikhlas, Surah Al-Falaq, and Surah Al-Nas, and blow into his hands, and then rub his hands over his face, hands, and the front of his body. And he did that on a regular basis. And also the same thing when he used to be sick. So inshallah, we're going to go through the tafsir of the surah, and then after that, the grammatical analysis. So just like in Surah Al-Falaq, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands the Prophet Ali salatu wasalam, Qul, say, A'udhu, I seek the refuge, bi Rabbin nas. Seek the refuge of the Lord of the people. The Lord of the people. The word Rabb, it is generally translated as Lord, but it has a much broader meaning than that. The word Tarbiya, it is not from the same root letter as Rabb. The root letter of Rabb is Ra, Ba, and Ba. And the root letter of Tarbiya is Ra, Ba, and Ya. But however, the meaning of both of these two are very similar. The word Rabb indicates a person or an entity that takes care of and looks out for the good and for the uh, for the uh, well being of certain individuals and certain people. So Rabb, for example, Rabbul Bayt is a phrase used in Arabic, which means the head of the household. So the head of the household, generally the man of the household, takes care of the expenses, the groceries, and the tarbiyah of all of the dwellers of the household, the wives, the children, and so on. So he is known as Rabbul Bayt. So when we say Rabbul Nas, the Lord of the humans, it indicates that that Lord, that Rabb, is the one who is looking out for the welfare, welfare of humans and also takes care of their risk, their sustenance, and everything that they could need and hope for. So that's why he's referred to as Rabbun Nas. And this discussion, inshallah, will continue later on in the lecture about why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions these ayat in a particular order and the wording in, in such an order. But let's continue right now with the translation. Malik in Nas, Malik refers to the king. And it should not be uh, confused with Malak. Malak with a fatha on the lam, it indicates angel. Malik means king. So Malik in Nas, the king of the humans. And Ilah in Nas, Ilah means the god of the humans. The word ilah, it means that entity that one worships, that creator that one worships, or the one that is worthy of worship that is referred to as ilah. So why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions these sentences in this particular order? Why Rabbun Nas, Malikin Nas, Ilahin Nas, why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the words in this particular order, the scholars of Tafsir say that when a person is growing up, the first thing that he will come to realize is that he has a creator who is look at, looking out for him, who's taking care of him, providing for him, giving him sustenance, 
So this is the first realization that a person has. Therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he starts off with Rabbun Nas. When the person becomes a little bit more mature, he will realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who is in total control of everything. And only he and he alone can do whatever he wishes and pleases in terms of providing for and taking care of the humans. So then he comes to this realization. That's why the second thing that is mentioned here is Malik and Nas. And then finally, when he comes to the second realization, he will realize that no one else is worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah alone. So that's why this order of ayat has been mentioned. I seek the refuge of the Lord of the humans, the King of the humans, the, the God of the humans, the one worthy of worship of humans, the ma'bud of the humans. Now another question that also comes up is that why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions an nas again and again? Why not, first of all, mention only one time an nas? So it could be for a variety of reasons. First of all, the formulation of the ayat and rhyming them, that is one of the reasons. But the bigger reason could be that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to make ibatha and connect his name with the human beings to show the honor that he has given to the humans. Otherwise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also the rub of the animals. He is also the rub of the skies. He is the rub of the uh, stars. He's the rub of the sun. He is the rub of every single creation that has been created. But why he specifically mentioned an nas Because he wants to give honor to the human beings to connect himself with the humans. And Allah mentions in the Quran, وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمْ Indeed, we gave the Bani Adam, the children of Adam, honor. So that honor that Allah gave the human beings resulted in him providing for and taking care of the humans, not only in the physical aspects of whatever they needed, but also the spiritual aspects by sending Anbiya again and again to make sure that we were guided and to make sure that we follow the right path so that we can be successful also in the hereafter. So going back to this concept of ibafa or possession, sometimes when the ibafa is made, it is to honor the mudaf ilayh. In this again grammatical terms that we're talking about here, mudaf means the one who possesses, mudaf ilayh means uh, the one that is possessed. Malikin nas meaning, or rabbun nas meaning the lord of the humans. So the humans are possessed by and owned by rabb, the lord. So here rabb is mudaf and an nas is mudaf ilayh. So this mudaf and mudaf ilayh that is taking place, the mudaf ilayh is being honored by the mudaf. So this is, and sometimes the other way around occurs. For example, if we say, Abdul Malik or Ghulam Malik, the slave of the king. So here, the slave of the king, the word is Ghulam is mudaf and Malik is mudaf ilayh. But in this case, what is happening, the slave is being honored by being the slave of the king. Otherwise, if the word slave was used, usually, generally, that is regarded as being a derogatory term and a person doesn't want to aspire to be a slave. But when you say Ghulam Malik, the slave of the king, then that honors the status of the slave because he is not a, an ordinary slave, rather he is the slave of the king himself. The same thing applies when we say Abdullah, Abd means slave, but when we attribute that Urbudiyah and being an Abd to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is an honor for us, not an honor for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but an honor for us. But in this case of Rabbul Nas, the Mudaf Ilayh is being honored by the Ibafa. 
And so uh, we as human beings are honored by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by him declaring that he is our Lord, he is our King, he is our Ma'bud. Also, we need to keep in mind that why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions an nas rather than the rest of the creation. Because it is the humans that need to seek refuge from the shaitan. Allah's refuge from the shaitan is sought. Why? Because the shaitan has declared himself to be our open enemy. And he has promised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I will come and attack the humans from the front and the back and the side and from the right and the left. And he has promised that I'm going to mislead all of them. And then except for your slaves that have been chosen that I cannot do anything against but he will try his level best to try to mislead us and to take us down the wrong path. So that is why the refuge that we are seeking of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the shaitan it is mentioned later on in the surah so that is why Allah is mentioning an nas again and again so again the translation of the three first ayahs قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ nas say I seek the refuge of the Lord of the humans مَلِكِ nas the king of the humans إِلَهِ nas the god of the humans مِنْ شَرِّ الْوَسْوَاسِ الْخَنَّاسِ now it gets to the point of what we are seeking Allah's refuge from from the evil of al-waswas al-waswas what is al-waswas it refers to al-muwaswis al-muwaswis means the one who whispers the shaitan he whispers into the hearts of the human beings he whispers into the minds of the human beings that do this and do that commit shirk commit kufr commit zina drink alcohol and he puts these thoughts into a person's mind but at the same time, he is Al-Khannas. From the evil of Al-Waswas, the one who puts Waswasa, he puts those whispers in, and then he slinks away, Al-Khannas. He retreats. And this is a very powerful reminder to us all that the shaitan cannot actually twist our arm into making us do evil things. It is really part of our self-control that and our weakness that makes us fall and commit sins and that is why it is mentioned in a verse of the quran that the shaitan on the day of judgment he will say that allah made you promises and i made you promises and so Allah made you the true promises and I made you a promise but I broke that promise and I didn't have any control over you except the only thing was that I called you you responded to me don't blame me blame yourselves so this and other ayat they indicate that the shaitan really does not have much control. He says very clearly in this verse that I had no control over you except that I invited you, I called you, I whispered into your hearts. First, so you responded to me. So, when this is the case, we need to understand that we need not be afraid of the shaitan, we need not be afraid of jinns, we, not, we need not be afraid of the whisperings of the shaitan. What we need to try to control is ourselves and not fall prey to the whisperings of the shaitan who is described here as al-waswasil khannas, the one who whispers and then he retreats. nas, the one who whispers into the hearts of the humans. So the sadr, the word sadr, it means chest and it because the chest is where the heart lies and the Shaitan, he whispers and he influences our hearts. That is why it's mentioned the one who whispers into the hearts of the humans. Now, this word, this sentence is connected to Shaitan. Okay, the Shaitan that we are asking Allah's refuge from, 
that can come in two forms. It can come in the form of jinns, which are the shayateen that we cannot see, about whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, He sees you from a, a, a situation or a place where you cannot see them. His and him and his qabil or his group, they are watching you and they can see you where you cannot see them. So this is one aspect. And the word jinn itself, uh, the word jinn refers to things which are hidden. A thing which is hidden, jim nun nun, the root letter, it indicates a hidden thing. That is why the word jannah also, it refers to gardens. And those gardens that are so lush and green that they hide things inside them. A person can go inside and he can get lost because of the lushness and the greenness of the forest that they're walking in. That is why it's referred to as Jannah. So Jinnah also, it's from the same root letter. Why? Because the Jinns are hidden from our view. And also there are Jinns from the human, there are Shayateen from the human beings that also try to provoke. And that, that is why it's so important to have good company of pious people, people that are obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, people that influence us in good ways. And there are many hadith that indicate the importance of a good friendship. The Prophet وسلم, he said, A person is on the religion of his friends. So each one of you should see who his friends are. And we, all of us individually, should think to ourselves, who my friend is, who do I hang out with, who do I associate with, who am I proud to be uh, a friend with. And if the people are not practicing, they are away from the masjid, they are away from the rest of the ummah, and I'm trying to associate with them, that is an indication that that is not the right type of friendship for me. So there are also humans that do the same thing that the shayateen do in terms of provoking and trying to mislead people. So we are seeking Allah's refuge from also those shayateen. So again, the summary, uh, the translation of the surah, nas, Say, O Prophet of Allah, I seek the refuge of the Lord of the humans, Malikin Nas, the King of the humans, Ilahin Nas, the Ma'bud, the one who is worthy of worship of the humans, Min Sharril Waswas Al Khannas, from the evil of Al Waswas, the one who whispers Al Khannas, and he slinks away, Al Ladi Waswi Sufi Sudurin Nas, the one who whispers into the hearts of the humans, Min Al Jinnati, one Nas, from the uh, jinns and the human beings. That completes our tafsir of Surah Al Nas. Please stand by for the grammatical word to word analysis. Jazakumullah Khairan. Inshallah, we're going to start the grammatical analysis of Surah An-Nas, starting with the word Qul, and the root letter of Qul is Qaf, Waw, and Lam. These are the three root letters, and this word Qul is the command form, and it's any command form is actually derived from what's known as the mudari or the present tense, which in this case is yaqulu. You probably come across this word when you're reading the Quran. So the way that the command form is formulated is that you would remove the what's known as the alamatul mudari, which is this, and then you would basically give the sukun to the lam. Uh, and there's already a sukun here. So it ends up being cool and then the rule is that whenever there are two letters which are both sakin in this case you have the wow and the lam which have both sukun on them the first one is removed so it ends up being cool and we can just go through that again just to clarify
Yaqulu Ya is removed. You put a sukun at the end there. And this already has a sukun. And therefore, what you're going to do is remove this. Here you end up with Qul. And we can try that with another one too. For example, Yabiyo Ya B O Remove the Alamutul Mutare, which is the first letter, and then you give this one sukun, and there's already a sukun here. So because of Istimam Sakinin, two sakin letters being together, you remove this one and you end up with the word bi'a, which means Cell, bia, cell is the command form. So qul me means say or tell, and this is whenever you have that in the Quran, it is usually directed to our beloved Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, telling him to tell people uh, what is very important, what is coming in the words after that. In this case, a'udhu, which means I seek refuge, and the root letter of a'udhu is Ain, Wow, and Dal. That's these are the three root letters. And the Hamza in the beginning or the Alif in the beginning, that is indicative of it being the first person Mudare. So whenever you have a Hamza at the beginning of a verb, it's an indication that it means I. I am doing something and in this case I am seeking refuge. I am seeking refuge. Bi Rabbin Nas. Uh, ba is Harful Jar. Harful Jar means preposition and it occurs prior to nouns. Uh, and it, this Ba, it actually gives different meanings in different contexts. And here in this context in which it's being used, uh, the meaning is in, meaning I seek refuge in your Lord or in the Lord or from the Lord even uh, so this ba the meaning changes according to the different context in which it's used and you will come across different meanings in the future inshallah so here because you're seeking refuge of uh, the Lord of the worlds which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this ba it is used with a'udhu b I seek the refuge of the Lord of an-nas an -nas, is the plural of al-insan. Insan is the root letter and an-nas is the plural of that. Okay, so again, I seek, say, I seek the refuge from the Lord of the humans, of mankind. Malik in nas the king of mankind. Malik means king. And uh, remember that malak, if it has a fatha on the lam, it means angel. In Hava illa Malakun Karim in Surah Yusuf, in Malik it means king. Okay, An Nas, the king of the of mankind or king of the people. Ilah Hin Nas, Ilah means uh, God, and the root letter is uh, the Hamza Lam and the Ha, and An Nas again is the uh, single form of uh, or the plural form of Al Insan. Min Sherri from the evil. So Min, it, it is a preposition. It's a harful jar. And what comes after that, it has a kasra because of the fact that it's a harful jar. And the harful jar will always be attached to a noun. And the noun here in this is Sher. Sher, evil. And Sher, the root letter, is Sheen. Ra and Ra. Sheen, Ra and Ra. Uh, remember that when you have a Shadda on the letter, it indicates that actually there are two letters there. And the combination of these two letters, they will result in a Shadda being put on top of it, the Shadid put on top of it. And it looks like there's two letters, but in fact, if you go back to the Asl, the root, there are actually three letters. 
al waswas al waswas waswasa it is, this is actually one of the uh, rubai forms and uh, the people that are familiar with arabic will know that most verbs and even nouns they are derived from three uh, root letters but sometimes on the odd occasion you will get even four letters and sometimes you will get uh, five letters which is uh, very rare indeed but alwaswas the root letters are in this case wow seen and wow seen wow seen and wow seen are the root letters here was wa sa okay that's the past tense maldi the past tense meaning he uh, made waswasa or whispered uh, and like i said it is it's referring to the shaitan and alwaswas alwaswas means the whisperer but the root letters are wow seen and wow seen rubai if you can see rubai it has one two three and four letters so that indicates that it's a rubai form which is four root letters and al khannas the root letter is kha noon and seen and what it means is the one who actually retreats so what the point is that the shaitan he will whisper into a person's mind in his heart and provoke him to do things and after whispering he will just retreat meaning he will not be able to uh, actually twist a person's arm and makes it make him do something bad the actual action is done by the person and therefore the accountability is with the person that does the action and the shaitan cannot cannot be blamed so kha noon and seen are the root letters the next time alladhi yuwaswisu alladhi is one of the asma al mawsula and it is known as in english as the singular relative pronoun and in arabic it's called ism mawsul or asma min asma al mawsula it means the one who and the feminine version of that would be allati uh, and the plural version would be alladhina and the feminine plural version will be allati yuwaswisu is the same as waswasa but it's in the present tense okay so waswasa was the past tense and yuwaswisu is the present tense he whispers or he is whispering or he will whisper so alladhi yuwaswisu the one who whispers fi fi means in inside and it is one of the huruf al jar and as you can see sudur it's the plural of uh, sadr it means the chest the one who whispers in the chest and nas of the people of the mankind so it's referring to the shaitan alladhi yuwaswisu fi sudur an nas the one who whispers in the hearts or the breasts of the people the word sudur is the plural of sadr sadr chest breast uh, also heart is used as a as a translation sudur the chests of the people of the mankind min al jinnati wan nas from al jinna from the jinns and the humans al jinna we know what the jinns are uh, and the root letter of jinn is jim noon and noon jim noon and noon so uh, it refers to anything actually that is hidden and the jinns because they're hidden from our eyesight therefore they are referred to as jinni or the this word jinna and a lot of people actually when they're memorizing they say min al jannati wan nas jinna is the correct word 
and uh, the changing of the haraka actually changes the meaning because it is followed by uh, a or preceded by harf al jar therefore you have uh, a uh, kasra on the word jinna min al jinnati wan nas and wa and an nas as i've mentioned before it is the plural of al insan an nas so let's go back to the brief translation again qul a'udhu bi rabbin nas say i seek refuge from the or in the lord of the mankind malikin nas the king of the mankind ilahin nas the god of the mankind min sharril waswasil khannas from the evil of the whisperer who withdraws so after whispering the shaitan withdraws that's why he is known as al khannas alladhi waswisu fi sudurin nas the one who whispers into the hearts of people or the chests of the people min al jinnati wan nas whether those people are from the jinna the jinns or the human beings or the translation could be those shayateen that whisper into the hearts of the people could also as they are in jinn form they could also be in human form so we seek refuge from all forms of the shaitan whether they are humans or jinns so this is what is meant by min al jinnati wan nas i conclude the uh, grammatical analysis and like always i suggest that you join seriousarabic.com the website that teaches arabic so that inshallah you can uh, keep up with the grammatical terms and so on that i'm using here inshallah